Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Van Kasabian. I'm a urologist practicing in Atlanta, Georgia with advanced urology. I've been performing HIFU for about 15 years now. I was one of the early adopters. And I was doing most of my cases in Canada, where I'm originally from and licensed. But ever since the FDA approved the device here in the US, I've been doing all my cases here in Atlanta. I picked um, an interesting one. It's one of my first cases uh, to be done in the US. And I picked it for, for a couple of reasons. And as I present the case, um, I'll tell you what I find interesting about this, this particular case uh, among others. So uh, this gentleman presented to me back in 2015. He was 68 years old at the time. His PSA was rising to about 8.6. He was potent, active. Um, he had moderate lower urinary tract symptoms due to BPH. But we sort of had a nonchalant conversation and he was not my patient at the time. And he told me that he'd had, you know, a couple of previous biopsies uh, that were negative, but his PSA kept rising and he was a little bit concerned and he sort of knew what, what I did for a living. Um, one of these biopsies actually turned out to be a saturation biopsy uh, when I finally got the records and met him as a patient. So when I reviewed this, I was concerned that we had missed something. And that back in 2015, MRI wasn't as available as it is today in 2021. It was starting around the country. Uh, there were some studies out there. It was very operator dependent. So what I did is I did a test that I was using back then as a pathology lab test, Confirm DX, which basically looks at field changes in the core biopsies that have been procured. So I had his old previous biopsies sent over for Confirm DX, and it actually came back as suspicious in a certain area of the prostate. And that led me to want to do a biopsy but I did decide to send him out of town for uh, an MRI, which was uh, not locally available at the time. And this read as a Pyrat 5 lesion in the left anterior apex, measuring 18 by 12 by 13 millimeter. His prostate was enlarged due to BPH at 55 cc's. So I decided to do some biopsies and I have a picture here of the MRI. You can see on top uh, the bladder, the prostate and the rectum. And I, I pick, picked one slide. It may not be coming uh, or presenting itself as, as well as I would like, but you can sort of see uh, an area on the anterior uh, prostate and the transition zone just to the left of center, almost center. And, and this was, you know, pretty much why this had been previously missed on e, uh, previous biopsies, even saturation biopsies. So we went ahead and performed some fusion guided biopsies of this uh, index lesion along with other biopsies and everything else came back negative except for this index lesion high anteriorly on the prostate. Gleason three plus four equals seven. So what we consider this to be intermediate risk, favorable intermediate risk category. Uh, we discussed treatment options at the time, uh, and I thought uh, focal HIFU was a great choice given the fact that he'd had so many previous biopsies that were negative, and the only thing that picked it up was his fusion biopsy. So I felt very comfortable both on previous biopsies and MRI that no other malignancy was identifiable in the prostate. He underwent focal HIFU. He was uh, one of my first cases back in 2016, early 2016. Uh, his PSA natured a few months later to 2.4. An MRI later that year turned out to be negative. His PSA so slowly began to rise and it was up to 4.3 in July of 2017. So about a year and a half after his uh, initial focal HIFU, his uh, PSA begin uh, to rise. And his MRI now in February of 2018, so two years after his focal HIFU, he now had a Pyrat 4 lesion in the same spot. This time it measured 12 by 10 by 7 millimeters. 
And now the prostate measured 42 cc's, probably some volume reduction to, due to the uh, prior HIFU. So he underwent a repeat focal HIFU in February of 2018. His PSA did nadir to 3.71. His lower urinary tract symptoms continued to get worse. And we decided to do Urolift because he was sexually active and wanted to maintain his um, uh, ejaculatory function. His PSA in July of 2020 was 6.5. So it crept up a little bit. And then the PSA a few months later in January of this year was 7.4. So I sent him for an MRI, which was negative in January of this year. So just a couple months ago. So now we have a patient who really has done very well overall in terms of symptoms, in terms of maintaining his quality of life, Yes, he did have two focal procedures, but we have given him about six years improvement in quality of life, avoiding a radical prostatectomy, avoiding radiation therapy with all the potential side effects. So I present this for a couple of reasons. One is that this was an ideal case of MRI guided fusion, right? He had a very anterior gland, which easily easily was missed on prior biopsies. Fusion biopsy proved it. He unfortunately had a good treatment, but failed his first HIFU. And he seems to have a successful treatment with the second, all maintaining his uh, um, quality of life. So the really the questions that are at this point, and this, this journey for him is obviously still evolving, is do we actually have a rising PSA? If we do, I'll continue to monitor it. Uh, should we consider a PET CT scan, such as a flucycovine uh, PET scan to make sure that he doesn't have any disease outside the prostate, which is probably unlikely given his favorable intermediate risk category. Um, he's now 74, he continues to be active. He maintains his erections with sildenafil and he now has minimal IPSS score. So his quality of life is really great. Um, but do we consider imaging at this point? These are all questions. Nobody has the right answer, but it's food for thought. Uh, do I wait to see what his PSA is doing? I feel good that his recent MRI was negative, but these are all real life cases. And, and I bring this to your attention, basically for the several reasons that I elucidated. Um, Happy to report, I will continue to obviously monitor this patient. My thought process was I'll wait another few months and see if the PSA is truly rising, then consider uh, further imaging such as a, a PET CT at that point. Uh, I'll even consider doing a repeat biopsy even with a negative MRI, especially targeted to the area in question that I know um, was, was the, the affected uh, area. So happy to have presented this case, um, and uh, you know I'd love to to hear your opinions or or if you think about it. Please feel free to reach out. Happy to discuss. Thank you for your time.